Today we're watching... Late Phases. It's about adolescence. I don't think it is. It looks like a or, horror. Yeah, like monster it's movies. It's cheesy horror. It's about werewolves. Crazy movie. Anyway, let's watch the movie. I'm playing with the cat off screen, and by playing with the cat, I mean I'm really just waving this she, around. Yeah, she doesn't and care. Lead, let me that play. We just watched Late Faces, and we were gonna sort of respond to it in categories. We're not gonna give any spoilers until we reach the part where we talk about the story and what we liked and disliked specifically about the movie. And we will let you know before that happens, so don't worry, it's spoiler free up until that point. We're gonna be going by a star system, one through five, one being unwatchable, two being not great, three being pretty good, four being awesome, five being perfect. So, our first category is enjoyability. How high would you rate this on the Katie scale of enjoyability? Two and a half. I, th I liked it, but I also felt that it was trying to be that like classic horror that also kind of has a little bit of cheese to it, but also sometimes trying too hard. That made me as not as interested, I guess. But that might have just been me. I don't know. Yeah, I'd give it a three. It was pretty good. It had some interesting ideas and characters. It was not scary. Um, right. I'm sorry, I've never seen a werewolf movie that is, to be honest. I just think werewolves are kind of cheesy in general. Yeah. And I thought maybe this would be the one that would sort of break that for me. But no, it's, it's really not scary. And I think, like, I was more interested in learning more about the characters than I was invested in, in the actual narrative visuals. The camera work is okay, it's nothing amazing. The compositions are right. They're, you're, you're not gonna be blown away. Um, there's there's little to no CG in it. I, I don't believe there's much at all. Maybe a, a, a stray matte painting here and there that we didn't notice, which good job if there was. It was mostly practical effects, which I would usually say happily about a movie, but these were not good practical effects, really. But I think that kind of went with that old style, cheesier horror. The problem is the narrative was not going for old style cheesy horror, right. and, for me at least. The narrative it, was conflicted. It was trying to be uh, somewhat realistic and grounded, and the creature designs were kind of almost gremlins-esque. I would have been much more invested in the story if I believed the monster, but you never once believe these monsters. The budget was just too low for what they were trying to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I would give it a two. I, I wanted this movie to have that old style kind of cheesier horror. So I liked the kind of not that great practical effects because of that fact. So I'm gonna go with like, like a three and a half. Part of the problem, the monsters look very fake, but some of the gore effects look really yeah. real and so so you get the sense that the movie is trying to go for something that's more actually tense and realistic and right. i'm not arguing with your score your score is what your score is yeah. this is this is just why i i yeah i was not impressed it, the movie was inconsistent it was yes. very inconsistent with itself acting i loved the main character yeah he was great he was really great he's he's worth watching the movie for alone i would say yeah most of the other characters i didn't like like the acting the acting wasn't good, other than the priest. The priest was good. The priest yeah. was good. I'd give it a two. Sorry, Ambrose. Yeah. You Am don't win. Ambrose's so. performance, the main character, was awesome. So, was really like, good. he would get a four, but then everyone else pulls it back to a two, so I would give this a three for me. Just, <laughs> just try and smooth over everything. So, sound. This is another moment where I felt like it was doing a good job at trying to, at being that cheesy horror but like you said i think it was accidental because they were like trying really hard to be artsy which have by having this certain music at this certain time like happening like during a monologue and i didn't stuff. get that at all oh i felt like it <laughs> felt cheesy to me there was too much music yeah the, and it made it monologue and yeah st and stupid i would say like the music that was there was really nice yeah it was it was for i thought it was just really good orchestral music pretty, you know, standard. You're not going to be humming a theme by the time you leave this, which uh, that's fine. I would personally just give it a three because it does the job. The problem is it does the job too much. It's it's such a small budget film that you get the idea that they are, they're trying so hard to make this really, really good and they succeed in so many ways, but then in other ways they just, they try too hard. And I think this is, this, this for me is one of those cases. Two and a half. 
All right, we're gonna get into spoilers now. We're gonna talk about the story. We're gonna talk about Ooh. our favorite parts of the movie and our least favorite parts of the movie. If you want to skip that and skip straight ahead to see the final score of everything averaged out, go to the time code shown on the bottom of the screen, run through our story in a couple sentences. A blind man loses his wife and gets moved into a old folks living facility. And then very soon, like two seconds into the movie, finds out that there's some type of creature that's been causing a bunch of ruckus and killing things. And he immediately knows it's a werewolf. That's and never he, really established. Yeah. He knows to go by silver bullets pretty much right away. I would have thought with how grounded his character was, because he's a war veteran and he's he's a very down-to-earth guy, instinctively in my mind it's like, oh, so it's, it's a bear. Like, he would think it's a bear. Right. But he jumps to werewolf. He's like, oh yeah, this, this is a werewolf. I've dealt with this before in Vietnam. No, right, not, not right. really. That would have been funny. Immediately attacks his next door neighbor, attacks his dog, which, by the way, I am anti-dead dogs in horror movies. I've already said this before. This was, we have found a loophole. If the dog goes down swinging, good job, guys. Good job. I'm proud of that dog and I'm proud of you. So, long story short, he gets involved at a local church, uh, meets a really nice priest. The priest's sort of assistant, he's the werewolf, and, and he is just sort of like feeding off the community. And he realizes that our protagonist is actually really prepared, because after this attack, the first attack in the movie happens, he like sets up all kinds of traps and gets silver bullets and gets ready for the next full moon. Um, and he sees this happen, so he's like, oh shoot, I'm gonna need some help. So he bites three wi three women in the town who are the, uh, the, the like, they're like the Heathers of the old folks' home. The um, gossipy old ladies. Yeah, the gossipy old ladies. And so now it's, and one of their husbands, so right. it's like... One of their patch-eyed husbands. Yes. So at the end of the I movie, matched. it's like five werewolves versus an old blind man in his house, which, on paper, that sounds so cool. And it's 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 it it's fine. It's a fun sequence. It, it lasts like two seconds. It does. And then at the end of the movie, he dies, but not before calling his son and sort of patching up their relationship and giving us some final pieces of their relational puzzle over the voicemail. And that part wasn't cheesy because it wasn't like a death speech. It was like he left a message on his his answering machine. So I appreciated that they didn't go for the whole death speech thing. Right. Um, and at the end of the movie, you just feel like his son is sort of at peace with. His, his not so good father, uh, who was able to sort of patch up their relationship in the end. Uh, it, it ends on almost like a, a bittersweet but happy note. So the, the story altogether, it's like it's an interesting idea. It sounds like it should be great, but there's absolutely no tension in it because the monsters are so fake. With a character that good and a performance that good, it's a really a shame that the rest of the movie doesn't live up to it, I think. Yeah. What would you give the story? Three. Yeah. Yeah. I get. I would give the story itself a three point five, just because it's such a cool idea. It's just not very well executed. Who would you recommend this to? I don't know. I like the normal people. I think I would recommend it to. I would assume they would be annoyed by the conflict within itself the entire time, just like I am. So. Yeah. I don't know. If you're like it a wasn't huge, bad. if you're a huge werewolf or creature feature fanatic, you might find something here that's interesting. Yeah. There are movies that do this better. Yeah, Ginger Snaps. Oh, <laughs> the cat just fell. So yeah, have you seen Late Phases? Are we totally off base here? Or did you feel something similar? Are there werewolf movies that I would find genuinely scary? Please let me know in the comments section. I did see the shaggy dog.